Earlier this week, Notion released a new feature, the basic table. This is something that a lot of people have been asking for, and it's just an alternative to the database. Plain tables remove a lot of the functionality of a database, in fact, all of the functionality, but what it does in return is give you flexibility. We'll explore how all of these features work in addition to some interesting use cases. Let's just get right into it. To create a new block, you're just gonna go forward slash into that block menu and search for a table. It should be under basic block. Now from here, you have two options. You can create new columns to the side by just clicking and dragging and down to the bottom, creating new rows in the same way. Up in the top right hand corner, you have this button. It is called fit table to page width. So if I were to add two more columns, I can fit this new table to the width of my page. So the options you have are to create a header column or a header row or both. Another thing you can do is translate this plain table into a database by going to this menu, turn into database. You'll see that since we didn't name the columns or the headers, it's just giving us placeholder one, two, three, two, seven. And then I can just turn this back into a simple table. For the first one, let's have just a plain text property. And of course, over here on the left-hand side would be where your name property goes. For now, I'll call this name. Property two, let's make this one a number. Property three can be a date. So you can create an inline date by typing the at button and the date. For example, September 5th, 2021. I can click on this link to reformat it. Go to date format, maybe month, day, year. So if we were to hover over any one of these cells, you can see to the left-hand side and up top these menu options. If I click on it, I can either clear the contents of this column or delete it entirely and then adjust the width. So for this fourth one, let's see if we can translate into a drop-down menu or a select property. So the first one could be red, one below it, and I'm just pressing enter here, could be green. So this fifth one here, let's see if we can create a relation property. And if you are familiar with Notion, you know that a relation property connects one database to another. So if we're turning this into a database, let's create that other database as a placeholder that we want to connect to. Example, let's just have two different entries here, one for task A and another one for task B. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and find a task A by linking to it. And that's again with the at symbol and I'm going to search for task A. So now let's turn it into a database. This still gives us text properties, but if we were to translate them, for instance, to, to a number, it shifts into a numerical value, three to date. It does turn into a date but we'd have to reformat, date format, and that month, day, year. Now a select property, I can translate this to select, and now it gives me a drop down menu where we can choose between red and green. Now as for that relation, I want to search for example pro. So let's go down to advanced, go to relation, and I'm going to search for that database. Now I have a window and a link directly to example pro. I can also select another cell and search for task B. So what happens if I wanna change this back into a plain table? So if I go back to the menu, it doesn't give me that option. That's because all of my properties are not text. So I need to transfer these back into text properties. And that's just by clicking on the header and changing to text. Now, when I go to the database menu, it should appear, turn into simple table. So what if I want to create a multi-select property? I can say red comma space blue. And here I can even say comma space at task B. Let's go back to turn into database and just check out four and five. Let's turn this into a multi-select property. 
Let's do the same with this relation. Okay, so now that we know how this plain table to database conversion works, let's look at different ways to design basic tables and when you may want to use them. So one way you can design with these tables, firstly, let's just create a new table. So I can go to options and just create a header row and have pros and cons, and then content below. What I can also do is create something like a floating header. So what I can do is just erase all of these and leave the header there, and then down below, create another table. So what's the point of this? Well, if I were to create four different columns, you'll notice that I now have two columns under cons and two under pros. I can make it also six, three under each. And by adjusting the width, it should line up perfectly down the middle. This pricing grid uses the nested headers as well. This is actually a replica of Notion's pricing grid. So let's actually recreate this one here. Just gonna copy this, bring it back over, and that list of examples will be available to look at down below. I have a header here of just two different columns and then just two plain tables, one that has a header at the top and the side and one just the side. What I did was create two empty blocks and what you can do is actually highlight the background by typing forward slash the color. Now we do that with both blocks and just make two different columns. Drag this one under the second column, bring this over to about here and then fit width of table. So even when you create columns and you adjust the width, it will adjust to that column. I'm going to enter down one time. Just delete these two here and get rid of this background. So I'm going to go forward slash default background. So what I did down below with this table is I created five different columns and then I just adjusted them to fit this floating header. You can use KTEX to create stuff like this, where I have personal pro $5 and then per month as a superscript. So in order to make inline K text, you're going to do two dollar signs, just sort of whatever text you want, and then close it out with another two dollar signs. You can click on that and it'll give you that text field. I can go backslash color, make sure it's gray, and then backslash text in curly brackets, go per month. And to turn this text into a superscript right before backslash text, I'm going to put in a caret symbol, which is just shift six. You'll notice that the text font is different from team and enterprise. That is because I did not signal a font type. So after text, I'm going to put SF. Now let's take a look at some other use cases. In here, I have three column pricing. So this is using those columns again, where you are dragging one empty block next to another and sliding your tables under each column. The pricing grid, I also have pros and cons list where I have actually dragged it into a callout. So you can do that. You can also drag it into quote blocks. Here's an example of a double nested column. So we have started and completed under a title experiment A and B and then students to the side, triple nested with three different columns under one header. So this is taking two different kinds of tables, one with a header at the top, one on the side, and sliding them under two different columns. The class report, so this is using KTEX again, and you are able to highlight the background of text with this. So let's take a look at this. Firstly, I'm gonna go backslash F color box and two different sets of curly brackets. The first one, I could say light blue. Second one, black. The last set of curly brackets, I'm gonna put in the actual text inside. And there it is. Now for this one, actually, let's put pink. So this actually gives me a light blue border and pink fill. 
I can just say pink as the border as well and text. Okay, so let's look at some full width table inspo and these are going to be more for personal use. For example, the weekly planner. We can create a table with just Monday through Sunday. And what's nice about this, again, you don't need that name property, which databases require. You'll notice that I've struck through some of this text indicating that that task is done. I've also highlighted some text. You'll also notice that I have emojis next to some of this text. And to quickly create an emoji, you're going to type colon and then search for an emoji like flame. I also have a workout table down below, again with two different columns, and a classic timetable where we have every day of the week, and on the left hand side, all of the times from 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. And for something like this, if you want to do this every single week and want to quickly clear out a certain day, you can go to the top of the column, go to the menu, and clear contents. Same goes for the rows, of course. Okay, so that's all I pretty much wanted to share with you guys. I'm gonna leave this page down below with all of these example tables. I'm also going to leave an article down below that shares um, the process of making all of these tables individually. And yeah, let's go right into the outro. I hope this gives you a better understanding of these basic tables and also some inspiration for your workspace. Just a reminder, I am going to be releasing a Notion course in about two weeks, December 13th to be exact. So look out for that. I'm gonna see you guys the rest of the week on Twitter where I will be giving you updates on that course and next week with a new video. I'll see you then.